Okay, let's do a simple little example here uh, of what's going on. Let's uh, let's say that uh, X is a set of people. Say, Amy, Bev, Kathy. Let's say Y is a set of cities. Let's say New York, LA. So N is New York, L is Los Angeles. Okay, so let's note that each function in y to the x, so even though these aren't numbers, they're sets, we still do say y to the x. It's just a way of, of just some terminology that enables us to talk about this. Each function in this set tells us for each person, What one city she, let's say, will go to, or was in, or wants to go to, doesn't matter, we'll say where she will go. So each of the elements of this is a function from x to y, and so it tells us for each element of x, one element of y tells us which one city she'll go to, and of course, each function uh, in x to the y tells us for each city what one person, which single person, uh, will go to that city. So in both cases here, emphasizing that f a function has to assign only one thing, of course, to each element of the domain. And so in this case, of course, in fact, the fact that the, I'm interpreting this as people and cities isn't really the important point for what I'm going to say here. It's simply that there are three elements here and two elements here, so we know that the set of all functions going from x to y, that is, according to this, that is going to be 2 cubed, 2 to the third, which is 8. And we know that, I emphasize these are sets, those are capital letters, the set of all functions from y to x here, that is going to be the reverse, 3 squared. Again, we can just refer to what we did over here. In fact, I guess I should have put another parenthesis here. And so this is 3 squared, which is 9. So there's nothing important about this example, and it's not deep, and it's not making any big point. I just want to give a, a simple example with a finite, small, finite number of elements in each set, and get an idea of what these sets might do and the number of elements in these sets of functions. Okay, so now let's look at another example. Let y be this two element set, zero and one, and let x be the set 1 up to n, or in fact any n element set would do, but this is a nice convenient one. You can identify their n elements and they're the numbers from 1 to n. And 
then the we have the following. We have first, let's note that the The number of elements of y to the x, similar to up here, um, is going to be uh, 2 to the n. In fact, let's write that that is going to be the number of elements in y to the number of elements in x. So here, these are actually numbers now, and that is going to be a 2 to the n power. But also, it's the case that the number of distinct subsets of the set X as you can verify is also 2 to the n. Maybe I'll make that 2 look uh, a little more like that 2. So, <laughs> doesn't look like Z to the n. So, huh, I did that and then I, then I messed up the n. <laughs> so, let's, <laughs> let's fix this. Okay, 2 to the n. All right. So you can say, well, okay, big, big deal, coincidence. Uh, the number of things in here is 2 to the n, the number of things in here is 2 to the n. This turns out to be a kind of an important relationship between the two, uh, and that comes from the idea of uh, something called an indicator function. And we're going to put that over here after we take off uh, all the stuff over here so we can get some space. So this uh, example down here that uh, the number of functions from this uh, set x into the set consisting of just 0, 1, that the number of those functions coincides with the number of distinct subsets of the set X, that motivates a definition of something called an indicator function on the set X. So let's write that over here. Let's say let X be any set. And now let me point out that it doesn't have to be a finite set like in the example. That's just a motivating example. Not necessarily finite. For every subset, S, subset of X, The indicator function of that subset is the function that we denote i for indicator sub s, because it's the indicator function for the set s, from the set capital X, not the subset, the whole set, into the set consisting of just 0, 1, defined as follows. For each X, in X, and I perhaps should have written that over here, for every X in the domain, 
i sub s of x is 1 if x is in the subset s and 0 if x is not in the subset s. So you can see why we would call it an indicator function because the function, its value at every x indicates whether x is in the subset or it's not in the subset. So uh, if x was the set of real numbers and s was the subset of just rational numbers, then the indicator function for that subset of the rational numbers would assign all the rational numbers the number 1 and would assign all the irrational numbers the number 0. Every single element of x gets assigned a number and the numbers 1 if that element is in subset S, and that number is zero if the element is not in S. So let's write down a remark that tells us something about this. And that is that Zero, 1, the set 0, 1 to the x power, where x is a set, so that is the set of all indicator functions because the indicator functions are functions that go from capital X into 0, 1, so the functions the set here is all the functions that go from capital X to 0, 1, so it's all the possible indicator functions, all the functions we could define that assign either 0 or 1 to every element of X. So this is a set of all indicator functions on X is and I'm going to put this in quotation marks, is the same as the set of all subsets of X. Now, what do I mean by the same as? What I really mean by the same as is there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the functions from x into 0, 1. That is between the indicator functions and the subsets of x. A one-to-one -one correspondence between those two sets. And in effect, the indicator functions, well, in, in effect, what we're going to do here is we're going to say, in effect, what that one-to-one -one correspondence is. So let me write this just with a colon here and say, for every uh, subset of x, there exists a unique function I sub S, the indicator function for that set in the set uh, 0, 1 to the X, and for every function f in the set of functions from x into 0, 1. That is, every function that goes from x into the set 0, 1, there exists a unique subset s of x such that the indicator function for that set is the function f. So let's just kind of review that. It says that given any subset of x, there is a unique function from x into 0, 1, which is the indicator function for that subset. Conversely, for any function from x into 0, 1, there is a unique subset for which 
the elements are exactly the ones that get assigned 1 in this function. And the elements in the complement of x are exactly the elements of capital X that get assigned the number 0 by this function. In other words, for any function from x into 0, 1, there's a unique subset of x whose indicator function is that function. So that is, so we actually have established here a one-to-one -one correspondence between the indicator functions on x, the functions from x into 0, 1, and on the other hand, the subsets of x. And so because of this, we write 2 to the capital X, where that's a set, that's a number, that's a set, but this is really just a notation. We write 2 to the X for the set of all subsets of the set X. And we call that the power set of capital X, to give it a name. Um, and I should add that this is sometimes, by some people, written as the power set of X. And I have suggested that um, one of the things that you read is parts of the book by Hammock called uh, Book of Proof. And in that Book of Proof, he has all these ideas he uses this notation. He does not, well, I shouldn't say he has all these. I'm not sure, I don't recall for sure, that he has the notion of indicator function. Not positive about that. He uses this notation, this terminology, the power set of x is the set of all subsets of x. He uses this notation for the power set of x. You can see p for power. But I kind of like this notation better because it kind of brings out this unification between subsets, between functions, um, and uh, also between uh, sequences, because, of course, sequences uh, in X, uh, let's say sequences in R, for example, they're functions from the natural numbers into R, so again, like this, um, and even n-tuples, where we could say Rn, the set of all functions from an n-element set into R, as we said earlier. So this kind of brings together the ideas of n-tuples, sequences, uh, functions, indicator functions in particular, and subsets of a set and the set of all subsets of x, uh, of any set x. So I think this unification uh, is kind of instructive, it's useful, it's a helpful way to uh, kind of get a handle on thinking about these alternative concepts. So that's it for today. Uh, see you all next time.